Hi there Booktube, it's Roz and I'm here with a new original tag. Now that's slightly embarrassing because I've been tagged in some, some brilliant tags by lovely people um, over the last few weeks that I haven't managed to get to. And um, But I will. And there's a reason why I'm doing a, an original one now. And this is because this is one that Elizabeth of Bookhands and Books and I have come up with to kind of fit with People April, the readathon in April about reading um, nonfiction about people. And we really wanted to do it now so that people, if, they, if, if you want to, you can do this tag during April or while you've, or, or soon after, while you've got kind of nonfiction about people in your minds as it were. So we're calling it the this or that tag for people April because it's about your your likes and dislikes. You, it's your, your, your do you like this or do you prefer that around um, biographies, memoirs, letters, diaries, you know, non-fiction, not fiction about people. There's 10 prompts. Um, you don't have to do all of them. You can do the ones that kind of resonate for you or where you could get to be opinionated or um, you've got things to say or that might, you know, will inspire you perhaps to recommend some books that you would like to recommend um, that are like uh, people, people books. So prompt number one, big, fat, detailed biographies or short and succinct, which this or that, which do you prefer? Now, I'm I'm not that keen on a really fat, comprehensive biography, if I'm honest. Um, you know, I know last year, you know, people were raving about Red Comet, about Sylvia Plath, and I sort of thought to myself, you'd probably have to pay me to read a book that long about one person. Um, you know, a biography that I suspect is going to tell me, you know, uh, you know, what they had for breakfast every day and who they had it with, you know, it's, I'd rather have a snooze. And, I mean, I, 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 you know, that's perhaps, you know, a bit limited of me. But it, I, I have to say, I think I really do prefer biographies that are shorter, that take a particular perhaps angle on the subject, um, you know, look at a particular part of their life or uh, an aspect of their life or, 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 you know, just come at it with, um, uh, you know, a particular interest. Um, or alternatively, um, uh, biographies that are like group biographies that 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 you know talk about several lives in but in an interesting way that it, that 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 are in some way connected you know so you know like I loved reading our People April um, uh, group read last year um, the Five by Hallie Rubenfield I loved um, Square Haunting. Um, by Francesca Wade about about women uh, 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 a number of women writers that all lived in the same part of of Bloomsbury in London um, but at different times that sort of thing lap it up but um no 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 red comets for me could be to do with having to read you know such big fat things when I was doing a history degree I don't know but yeah problem number two celebrity memoirs or memoirs about an average Joe now, I'm tempted to say, oh, I don't read celebrity memoirs. Oh, not for me, you know, not, not my thing at all. But when I think about it, I I can and do read memoirs by celebrities. I just probably wouldn't define them as celebrity memoirs. Um, so good example would be I just read um, Strong Female Character by Fern Brady. She's definitely a celebrity and you know, she's a stand up comedian. She's on telly a lot. Um but it's not it's not a book about that. It's a book about um, growing up as an undiagnosed autistic woman. Similarly, um, Travis Alabanza, none of the above. Um, Alabanza is a performer. Um, their book is about being um, black and, and mixed heritage and non-binary um, and their experience of that. And, and, and so there's something about if a celebrity has things to say, um, being a celebrity gives them a platform to to get their memoir published and and but you know I, I can enjoy reading it. The most sort of celebrity-ish memoir I can think of that I've read 
um, the, you know, that is more the sort of classic celebrity memoir, but that I would really genuinely recommend to anyone is um, The Moon's a Balloon by David Niven. Now, for you young things out there, David Niven was um, an actor and a bit of a heartthrob and then a character actor um, for years from sort of the, uh, the 1940s through to uh, when he died, I think. And in 1971, he published his um, his memoir and it's got his childhood in it and his his wartime World War Two experiences, but also a whole load of stuff about all the people that he acted with and worked with in, in, in Hollywood in its sort of what was a bit of a golden era. So, you know, yeah, that's a celebrity, I guess. But, you know, celebrity memoirs have to be written by themselves and have something more to say than just, oh, I'm a celebrity and this is what I eat for breakfast. Oh, back to breakfast again. Do I have a breakfast obsession? On the other hand, a memoir by an average Joe, you know, a bit of me thinks, well, why would you read a memoir by an average Joe? Essentially, someone writing a memoir has to have, they can be an average Joe, as it were, but they've got to have had an experience or something to say that is interesting and, um, you know, that uh, is going to capture my my interest and engage or engage my emotions. And... Um, a good example of that would be um, H is for Hawk, which, you know, uh, the woman writing it, she's essentially, you know, fairly average. But she has an experience that we uh, all um, share or will share of, of losing a parent and an experience which is unusual and interesting to read about, which is um, training, a, training a hawk. And, you know, that... That makes for a win in a memoir for me. Prompt number three, complete correspondence or selected letters? Well, complete correspondence? Oh, my goodness. Just imagine if you could actually read everything that someone had written. How, you know, that that definitely threatens being extremely dull again or, 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 or you know, the kind of thing that you need to do if you are their biographer, but not you know, not if you're just, you know, your average reader reading for pleasure. I definitely want my collections of letters to be um, uh, well edited, compiled and, and, and you know, intelligently put together by someone who knows the subject and, you know, knows their context, knows their biography and, you know, makes something of it. A great example of that would be um, the Mitfords, um, uh, Letters Between Six Sisters, um, which was... Um, edited by Charlotte Mosley. The Mitford sisters, if you, you don't know them, uh, what a fascinating family. And she, Mosley, just does such a good job of picking out the most interesting letters and that will be most revealing about them and their relationships with each other. With each other. Absolutely, yeah, spot on. A long book, but a really good one. Uh, very, um, you know, a real page turner, I, I would say. And yeah, psychologically interesting. I I can be a little hypocritical about this because I I am genuinely really sad that we don't have more of Jane Austen's correspondence. Um, you know, sadly her her sister Cassandra did too good good a job of a, of a ruthless edit of her letters um, just after she died and burned a load of them. So you know, but I, I probably even if they did all still exist, I probably wouldn't read all of them. I'd want someone to do a good a good selection for me. Prompt number four. Memoirs when events are fresh or memoirs written with hindsight. Now, I'm always a bit shocked when someone who's still like, I don't know about, you know, in their 20s or 30s writes a memoir. You know, I do find myself thinking, goodness, how can you be sure that you know yourself well enough to to put your life down, you know, on paper for the rest of the world at that point? So I suppose I've got a slight anxiety about the idea of a fresh fresh memoir but actually I suppose that's because I'm thinking about people that are writing about kind of like their whole life as it were whereas some memoirs are can very successfully be written fresh um so travel memoirs would be a good example or nature memoirs you know there's no harm at all in them being written um you know fairly swiftly um, and um, that that's a, a genre or type of, of, of memoir that I that I particularly enjoy. Um, I'm reading one at the moment that's on the um, 
Women's Prize Nonfiction Longlist, um, A Flat Place by Noreen Masood. Now, I think that this is, I don't think she's that old, and I think it's sort of written about some quite, well, it's a combination of writing, uh, looking back to her childhood with hindsight, but then also writing uh, almost like a kind of a travelogue of visiting um, places, flat places around the British Isles, and then connecting that with her life and her experience of um, complex trauma. Um, I'm really enjoying it. There you go. Prompt number five, gossipy or scholarly biographies. Now, possibly neither for me. Um, I mean, I read for pleasure, not for study these days. So uh, I don't really want a a classic scholarly biography. You know, Um, I I don't need that. Um, You know, I, I I do care about whether biography is accurate, or at least I want to know whether it's either attempting to be accurate or is coming at it with a sort of honest bias that's fine too you know um uh, an opinionated you know um biography is fine and and whereas a scholarly biography you know has to kind of pretend that it isn't opinionated and tries to be sort of neutral and dispassionate and and they usually they aren't um but there you go but it is very much down to the quality of the writing, isn't it? Because um, I'll give you an example. I read a few years ago now um, uh, a, a what I would say is quite a scholarly biography by Hannah Joyner, um, and um, who's a booktuber. Um, her, I bet you know her channel, Hannah's Books. It's it's called. I'll, I'll give you the title. Um, uh, the unspeakable, the story of Junius Wilson, and it's about um uh a man who was born in the uh, sort of like uh, lived in the sort of 20th century earlier part of the 20th century in the american south who was both deaf and black and what the implications of that turned out to be for his life scholarly yes but lots of lots of drama lots of ideas beautifully written you know so yeah that's a win uh, gossipy well, the the moon's a balloon, I suppose, is an example of a, a gossipy um, memoir that I quite enjoyed. Gossipy biography? No, I think not. Prop number six: uh, diaries of an ordinary life or diaries of extraordinary events. Well, I suppose my ideal would be um, diary of someone who who is ordinary but lives through extraordinary events um that's probably like almost better than diaries by an ex someone who 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 um uh, you know whose acts were extraordinary if 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 that makes sense um a good example of that would be this one um uh, a woman in berlin so ordinary berlin housewife um, who wrote a diary at the point where, at the end of World War Two, when the Russians um, army moved into Berlin, and what happened to her and her experiences? You know, so eyewitness account of historical events in diary form, magic. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's. But I don't think I'd want to read a sort of a, a an ordinary life that didn't have something extra to put in the diary i don't know yeah unless it's somehow very well edited and compiled um uh i suppose um yeah y- you know what i mean moving on to prompt I'll, I'll i'll move on to prompt number seven arty memoirs or sporting memoirs now i'm more interested in artists you know writers musicians painters and so on than i am in sports people so i would tend to say arty um but you know i don't think i particularly like arty memoirs where they're writing about their creative experience their creative life um uh, i'm 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 probably more interested in in memoirs if it's a memoir where that's kind of almost incidental no i mean i'm, I'm perhaps reading it because of their they're an artist but 
um, that's not, you know, it's not about how they how they write or how they paint or how they make music. Um, like a good example would be a book I really enjoyed was um, Tracy Thorne's Bedsit Disco Queen, which is about growing up and um, tr- becoming a a, a, a a musician, becoming a a, a a pop star of sorts. And you know, but I enjoyed it because Thorne can really write. Um, and you know, and it's it, there's lots to connect there about sort of being young and and you know trying things, being brave, you know, uh, making trying to trying to live your dreams, but the ups and downs of that, yeah. Um, I I do like reading memoirs by artists, writers, and so on. Um, if it, if they're about something else, and an example would be our group read this year, which is I Am I Am Am by Maggie O'Farrell, brilliant, um, brilliant novelist. But this is about um, her seventeen brushes with death. Um, so you know, not about how she became a writer, but about other things in her life. L- uh, yeah, it's. Um, would I ever read a sporting biography uh, memoir? I've. I've I was trying to think. The closest I think that I've come to reading a sporting memoir was um, Robert McFarlane's Mountains of the Ma- Mind. Now, he's not exactly a sportsman, but he is quite a keen, he's a keen hiker, walker, climber, mountaineer. And this book, it has a lot of his sort of climbing and mountaineering experiences in it, but it is so much more than that. And it would need to be for a, a, a sporting memoir to engage me. There is a risk in reading memoirs by authors that you really like. Well, any kind of artist that you really like, and probably any sportsman that you really like too, you know, because sometimes you read the memoir and you come away, you know, slightly disillusioned with them. Um, My example for that would be I've read Rose Tremaine's memoir, um, Rosie, Scenes from a Vanished Life. Now, Tremaine is a... Excellent novelist, wonderful historical fiction, contemporary fiction, very versatile, lovely writer, really lackluster, whiny memoir. It almost put me off reading her novels for a while, even though, yeah, totally unfair. Prompt number eight, gritty or inspirational for your autobiography. Um, Now, I hate books that I feel um, are kind of manipulating me emotionally or telling me what to think. And I think both gritty and inspirational um, autobiography risks falling into that category. Um, uh, But a book can do both and succeed for me. And an example of that would be one that I've read for People April this year, um, Welcome to St. Hell. Um, It's a a, a graphic memoir about um, uh, growing up. It's like um, the author kind of re- revisits his childhood and his younger self and is kind of talking to her about how things will come good. You will work out who you are. You know, I, I'm I'm having a... a successful happy adult life now um post transition and and um you know and i i kind of empathize with your experiences that were me when i was you great both gritty and um inspirational because it's something that you know i feel like it would be really useful to read if i were a teenager that was you know gender uncertain had gender dysphoria was you know wondering whether or not you know um uh, i was uh, you know uh, actually trans and uh, you know so definitely inspirational um prompt number nine uh biographies of his historical figures or contemporary figures um historical every time for me i'm very dubious about biographies of contemporary figures i'm i I find it hard to think why i'd want to read them you know uh, an article maybe but it's unlikely people need a a bit more time before it's kind of interesting to read a biography about them i feel for me not you know you may differ but you know um i would much rather read a, a a biography about julian of norwich you know 
fascinating medieval woman mystic than Julian Assange, you know, um, uh, contemporary controversialist. Um, uh, I need a bit more time to pass for me, but that's me. You may differ, disagree. Prompt number 10, memoirs of happy days or tragic days? Well, I think I like a mixture. I, 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 I don't really want solely one or the other you know I'm definitely not interested in straight misery memoirs um I, I, I read a few back in the day I mean I think um Frank McCourt has a lot to answer for writing Andrew's Ashes because Andrew's Ashes was genuine it was a was one of the sort of original misery memoirs uh, is a genuinely good book but an awful lot of what f followed is complete dross. Fortunately, you can usually spot them by the cover, so that's okay. And, you know, and they obviously meet someone's need to read. Um, on the other hand, a book that's just about undiluted happiness is probably going to be a bit dull, isn't it? I think. I'm not sure. You know. Um, so, an example of a book that is kind of essentially about a happy experience is, is, is I can think of, oh, I've dropped it. Oh. And I'm struggling because of the broken arm. Sorry about that. This one, um, A Time of Gifts by Patrick Lee Fermor. This is about when he was 18 and he set off to walk, walk, yes, walk from the Hook of Holland in the Netherlands to um, Constantinople, as he called it, Istanbul, as we'd say. And it is full of youthful joy about doing that and about the people he met and about his experiences, you know, uh, yeah, almost undiluted happiness. But but there is a, a, a challenge involved there. I think you, you need that element of sort of, yeah, challenge or, 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 or uh, you know, a, a, a mixed experience. It is possible to read a memoir that is... Um, uh, totally about tragic experiences um and find that deeply rewarding and worthwhile and i've got an example of that for you um which is um primo levy um if this is a man and the truth the truth and these are his memoirs about um his experience of um being sent to auschwitz living in auschwitz and then the period um immediately after um leaving you know being being freed and uh, you know it's uh, it's a book that everyone should read i think and um but undoubtedly you know tragic events there we go so uh, that's my answers to the 10 prompts there's a bonus prompt um of sorts that i will let elizabeth explain in her version of this tag to do with samuel pepys's um diaries um I'm not going to list people that I'm going to tag here now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at people who are, for books she was taking part in People April, who've put videos up about think their T People April TBRs or a part of the Discord group and um, uh, tag them uh, in, in, in the description. But anyone that fancies doing this, please do. It's, re it's just really an opportunity to talk about your likes and dislikes in, in, in non-fiction about people. And don't feel that you have to do every single prompt if, if, if you don't want to. You, know, you can do an abbreviated version.